Hello and welcome to uh, the fifth video for chapter three, Basic Sentential Logic and Formal Fallacies and Cognitive Biases. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is talk about some common errors that people make when they're doing basic proofs. And there's two kinds of things we'll be talking about. One is um, things people <clears throat> do that they shouldn't do. And then the second will be some things people can do that they didn't realize that they could do. Um, so we're first going to start off with things that you shouldn't do. Some, pe some people do them, but you shouldn't do them. First, uh, whole lines in the rule, and by that I mean if you look at the, uh, the schematic for a rule, have to correspond to whole lines in the proof. So for example, if uh, we just look at three imaginary lines from a, a, uh, an example proof here. Uh, someone is using modus tollens on one and two to get A. So we have a conditional negation of the consequent, infer the antecedent. This is totally fine. Now what you couldn't do is something like this. Someone might look at this and think, oh look, I've got a conditional, the antecedent is Q, and here's not Q. That's the negation of this antecedent. So I can do modus tollens on 1 and 2 to get the negation of the, of the antecedent. This is the negation of the consequent, rather. So I can do modus tollens to get the negation of the antecedent here. Well, you can't do this. Why? Because if you look at the rule, the rule says you have to have a conditional and the negation of the consequent. This negated consequent has to be the whole line. And here, the negated consequent isn't the whole line. It's just part of it. It's just one component of this disjunction. So you can't do that. OK. Next, the operators that are specified in the rule have to be the operators that are on the lines in the proof, OK? Except negation, which I talked about when um, in the, uh, the first video here. Um, Go back and watch uh, the beginning of video one for negation. But here's what this means. Um, sometimes students will say something like, here's, here's uh, modus tollens again, and this is perfectly legit. Conditional negation of the consequent derived negation of the antecedent. Sometimes students will come up and say, hey, can I, can I use modus tollens on a disjunction? So what they have in mind is something like this. Instead of this being a conditional, this would be a disjunction. And they would try to use the same rule, right? We've got this, we have the negation of the second component, so we derive the negation of the first component. So we've used the rule, but just used it, you know, quote unquote, on a disjunction instead of on a conditional. Answer is no, you can't do that. There's a reason that the conditional shows up here. There's also a reason that in the verbal expression of modus tollens, it says if you have a conditional, right? Um, so don't do that. Red X means don't. Next up, when you negate something, make sure you're negating the correct statement. So what does this mean? Look at this um, <clears throat> application of modus tollens. We have a conditional. We have the negation of the consequent. So we should be able to derive the negation of the antecedent, right? Now someone might say, oh, what's the antecedent? It's A or B. So they just put A or B down here and kind of slap a tilde in front. Okay, this isn't right. Um, and the reason is that the thing that needs to be negated is the consequent. Okay, so here it's beta and we have not beta. The thing that should show up here is the negation of this disjunction. Here the only thing that's been negated is the first disjunct. The disjunction isn't negated, only a has been negated. So don't do that. What it should look like is this. Okay, this is the negated disjunction. Okay, when the disjunction is the antecedent. So that the whole disjunction needs to be negated. Okay, so when you're negating a statement, make sure you're negating the right statement. And relatedly, don't distribute negation operators. What does this mean? So this is the, uh, the little three lines we just had. This is modus tollens, and this is correct here because we have the negated consequent, and so we derived 
the negated antecedent. And here we negated the entire disjunction. It's not A or B in parentheses. So the whole, uh, the whole disjunction was negated. Now someone might think, oh, not parentheses A or B means the same thing as not A or not B. So they might just write this instead. And that isn't correct, actually. So um, not A or not B is not the same statement as the negation of A or B. So this is called distributing a tilde. So if you look here, it's like you had the tilde outside and you sort of took it and you sort of distributed it to these two inner components here. You put one on A and you put one on B. You can't do that. You also can't do it with conjunction. So not A and not B is not the same thing as the negation of A and B. So you can't distribute that tilde either. When we get to chapter four, um, we can do something similar to this that is legitimate, but it's not exactly this. Okay, so don't distribute tildes. Next up, don't mentally commute disjunctions or conjunctions. Okay, so here's an example. Um, we have uh, a conditional. The antecedent is A or B. Um, consequent is Q. And then on line two, we have B or A. Now, <clears throat> someone might look at this and say, hey, these mean the same thing. And that's right, they do mean the same thing, but they're different statements. Okay, they're, they're commuted. Okay, so, and if they're commuted, you can't do that. So don't do, this would not be legit. In order to sort of do modus ponens, you would need to have this antecedent, which is A or B. This isn't A or B, it's B or A. It's equivalent, but it's not the same statement. Now again, when we get to chapter four, don't worry, we're gonna get a rule that will let us swap the order of disjuncts and disjunction or conjuncts and a conjunction. Um, but we don't have that rule yet. So don't, don't uh, treat these as the same statement. Next up, what can you do when you're applying inference rules? So there's, there are some things that students, they don't realize they can do or they don't think they can do, um, but they can. And sometimes that can make your life a little bit easier. So first off, uh, the order of the lines in the rule, and by that I mean the, the written schematic of the rule. And what's the order? Well, the order is that the, the uh, conditional is first and then the negated consequent is second, right? Now, or more generally, this is above that in the proof, right? They don't even have to be next to each other. And here they are, they're next to each other and the conditional is above the negated consequent. But that doesn't have to be the case, right? You could have um, the conditional here and the negated consequent up above. In fact, these could be separated by a number of lines. They don't even have to be next to each other. It just says that you have to have these two things, but where they are, um, and they have to be on lines by themselves, but exactly where they are doesn't really matter. Um, so here I'm just sort of pointing out that even though uh, this is on top of this in the written rule, you can switch the order uh, here. Next up, you can cite the lines in any order. So for instance, um, this is legit modus tollens. I could cite this as one, two modus tollens or two, one modus tollens, it doesn't matter. So when you have more than one line that's being cited, you, you can decide the order of those, of those uh, citations. Next up, for simplification, you can simplify either conjunct, not just the first, you can simplify the first one or the second one. And for disjunctive syllogism, you can have the negation of either disjunct and then you derive the other one, right? So for instance, um, here's a disjunctive syllogism example. Um, we have a disjunction, we have the negation of the first disjunct, so we can derive the second, right? Not Q, we derive not Q. So here we have the negation of the first one. But you could also do it this way. I could have the negation of the second one. So you have Q, this is the negation of not Q, and then derive the first one by DS. That's fine also. Um, as for uh, creating a disjunction with disjunction introduction, you can decide the order of the disjuncts. 
Okay, so here um, I have Q. I decide, hey, I can make Q or X by DI on line one. Well, here I made, I put my new disjunct on the right, but I could also have done it this way. I could put the new disjunct on the left. Now, which way will I do it? It depends on which statement I need in order to do the proof. Okay, but, but you can make the choice. Same thing for making a conjunction, right? You can decide on the order. So if I'm going to conjoin Q and X, I can get X and Q by one, two conjunction, or I could get Q and X. I can decide the order of those conjuncts when I put them together. Okay, so that's it for uh, this video. Uh, the next video I will be introducing uh, conditional proof.